Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the podcast, Love Letters to Pam, the Jack Church Show. Or, of course, some of you are probably watching via our YouTube channel. That, of course, is Traveling with Jack and Pam. Either way, certainly appreciate you checking in with us. Hey, it's one of those days when I really feel like having one of those good old-fashioned pity parties because I'm feeling a little bit lonely. How many of you out there feel that way? Some of you may feel that way all the time. And uh, I can honestly say I have those days. Now, I have some good days. I have some bad days. I have some okay days. All of that's perfectly normal as we continue down this grief journey, as we call it. However, today felt a little more lonely than usual. Now, first of all, of course, I, I work alone at home, which I've talked about before. It may not be the best thing for me at this time. I used to work you know, on a TV station with a studio crew and other anchors and people around all the time. And now, yeah, I, uh, my job involves uh, talking with people, but it's uh, doing interviews across the country. So it's just a couple of phone connections. So it's a phone call every day or every other day whenever I'm doing the interviews. That's about it. So that's the reason I've mentioned before, I try and get out as much as possible. You know, I go to coffee shops, uh, probably go out to lunch a couple of times a week. Even though I'm by myself, at least I'm in amongst people and things that are going on. And and that seems to help uh, just a bit. But today, though, I kind of got hit with this extra lonely feeling because I... um, Uh, Spring training is coming up, and you may notice I'm wearing a little jacket here even in the house because in Phoenix today, it's only in the 50s, and I don't turn on the heat very much, so it's it's a chilly day. But anyway, believe it or not, spring training baseball games are getting underway, and this weekend, I thought, well, I'd I'd like to go to a game, and and I do find that going to sporting events is is not a problem, Uh, you know, going alone. I'm pretty good with that. Um, and you may say, well, don't you have friends there? And I, I say, well, I have a lot of acquaintances here right now. I don't really have any true friends, I don't think. Oh, there have been a few people that I've done one or two things with. And, and there's a, one gentleman I've gotten to know who's married, though, and has two kids. And, and uh, we've gotten together a couple of times, and I've told him, I've said, you know, I said, I almost feel guilty if, if we go do something because I feel like I'm taking you away from your wife and kids. And I said, I don't like doing that because I know I cherished my time with Pam and I cherished my time when the kids were still at home so very much. And, you know, now knowing what I know, you just never know how long that's going to be with you. So again, I don't have any real close friends here, so to speak. And even a lot of my close friends that are scattered all across the country, of course, they're they, they've still got their spouses. Uh, some of them still have kids at home, things like that. They've got their lives and, and they're moving on. And, and I certainly get that. They're, they're busy. Uh, they've got someone with them. And of course, you know, uh, here in this life, we, we, we had somebody with us a long time. I mean, I had Pam with me since high school. Uh, so I always had somebody to, to do something with. And boy, she was, she was my favorite. And then when the kids came along, you know, there were there were four of us doing stuff together. Start out, there were three of us together. Then we had the second kid. There were four of us doing things together. And then they went away off to off to college and got into their lives. And but there were still two of us, me and Pam. So I still had a partner in crime, so to speak. And then of course, when I lost her to heaven, it became just a little old me. Woe is me. No, I'm not asking for your pity and not asking for your sadness or those little emojis show the sad face, things like that. But the reality is. It is sad uh, not not having her here. And so I get back to talking about I somehow or another ended up with three tickets to a spring training baseball game this Saturday. Uh, it's between the, uh, the Oakland A's and the Arizona Diamondbacks. I, I only ordered one ticket, but for some reason they gave me three. It's kind of like uh, the weekend I went to the big golf tournament here. I ordered one ticket, then they gave me two. And I thought, well, maybe the extra ticket was for Pam. In this case, I'm thinking the extra tickets were for Pam and maybe one of our kids were going to be in town. But of course, that's not the case. And Who am I kidding? Pam's not going to be here either. So I've got these three tickets to a spring training baseball game. And this is when I started to feel very, very lonely. I started thinking, well, who could I ask to go to the game with me? And I started thinking, and I just really couldn't come up with anyone. Um... Because I really don't have any, what I would consider, close friends here. Again, I've got some acquaintances. And you're probably saying, well, reach out to the acquaintances. Well, I did. (laughs) I reached out to 
three or four of the acquaintances, and they all said, uh, no, they had other things going on, this and that. They really appreciated it, though. And then the one person I mentioned who's, you know, kind of become a friend, but has the wife and has the children, well, he was busy, too. Uh, the family was involved in an activity, and I certainly got that. And, uh, you know, I'd even, I would have suggested if he didn't have kids at home that him and his wife come enjoy me. But, you know, the, their kids are still at home, and they got stuff going on. So after putting out those feelers, so to speak, to have somebody come with me to the game, I just realized that, oh, I guess I'll just be going alone. And that's when I started feeling, you know, lonely and sad and really missing Pam. And then I probably made what might be considered a mistake. I went back through some of our photo folders and found when we went to spring training here in the Phoenix area. Not that long ago. It was about four years ago. I found several pictures of me and Pam in the stands together having fun at spring training. So I really, really missed her and missed having her here. I even got to the point of almost uh, thinking, well, there's this uh, website that I'm on. It's a community website for my area here. I thought, oh, what the heck? I'll just put on that website. I've got two extra tickets to a spring training game. Who wants to go with me? And then I thought, nah, that might not be the smartest thing to do. Um, not that I don't think most people are, are good folks out there and mean well, but, you know, you just never know. So then I thought back to what I've often told you. Sometimes we just got to go it alone. In fact, a lot of times we just got to go it alone. And I've told you before, I've learned to still enjoy myself going to events and things by myself. No, it's not as good as when Pam was here, but it's okay. And again, I'll take okay over just disastrous feelings, okay? Um, so I'm going to go to the baseball game. I wasn't going to go anyway. I just ordered one ticket, didn't know I was going to end up with three, so I had to remind myself, look, you were happy to get the one ticket, you were excited to go to the game, forget the fact you had those two extra tickets, right? Don't let it bug you. And when I get there, I'm sure I'll be glad the weather forecast is supposed to be nice, it's a good seat. I'll enjoy being there. I'll be around the crowd. I'll enjoy some baseball. Now, that's not to say that, though, when I get to the stadium and I've got those two extra tickets on my phone, I will probably ask around as I see people coming and going, hey, do you need a ticket to the game? I've got two extras. Be glad for you to have them. Um, you know, the bad news is you'll have to sit next to me. The good news is, though, you can get in the game and for absolutely free. Yeah, I'm not going to charge. I mean, these are extra tickets gifted to me. So I'll plow on through. I'll go to the game. I'll have a good time. After the game, uh, you know, I'll probably take a hike maybe because it'll probably end early. Then I'll come home and the house will be empty and I'll feel alone again and I'll feel lonely. And then we'll do it all over again the next day. That's what we got to keep doing. You know, I had a little short message not long ago about how, you know, we're still here. Just got to keep pushing forward. God's still writing the script. Uh, I will tell you, I hate this script, guys and girls, and I bet you do too. I just don't like it. You know, that's why I do these programs. I sit here talking to this camera that's talking to you that feels like I'm talking to somebody. I know that sounds bizarre to a lot of people, but I bet it does it to many of you. The things we do that some might look and think we're crazy, it's not crazy. It's just part of the human experience. Okay, this is a first. There's a part two to this podcast that I was talking about. Remember at the beginning, I shared with you the story about the baseball tickets, nobody to go to the game with me, and I said, maybe I'll just go stand outside the stadium and find somebody there to go with me. Oh my goodness, I think God planned this to turn out this way. Me not being able to give away the tickets. Because this has a great ending, and the message being, you just got to put yourself out there. So, I go to the stadium on that Saturday. I've got my extra tickets. I'm standing around out there trying to see what looks like maybe some people who could use some tickets. A couple of couples came up. I saw them headed towards the ticket counters. I said, hey, I've got a couple of tickets, no charge. They're right behind the Diamondbacks dugout. 
The only downside is you have to sit with me. Uh, oh, we'll be fine. We'll just buy our own tickets. Two sets of people turned me down. They thought it was a little shaky, a little suspicious. I'm thinking, why would they think that? They're on my phone. They'll scan them. They get in the stadium. End of story. But, as I mentioned, there's a reason for everything, I guess. Because then I see this guy walking over towards the ticket window, and he's wearing a Texas Tech sweater. Well, years ago, and this is a whole other story, we actually lived in Lubbock, Texas for a short time. I go over to him and I said, hey, go Red Raiders. And I gave him the Red Raiders sign. They do the, it's a guns up thing, the Texas Tech Red Raiders do. And he goes, hey, uh, did you go to Texas Tech? I said, oh, no. I said, uh, we jokingly say we spent some time in Lubbock, or maybe we did time in Lubbock. Uh, but I said, yeah, we've been to ball games there. He goes, yeah, he says, I didn't live in Lubbock. He says, but our daughter went to college there, so I wear the gear. And I said, well, hey, I've got a couple of extra tickets to the ball game. Uh, no need you buying one. Would you like to go? And uh, he said, sure. And uh, his name was Jeff. So Jeff and I go in the game. Ends up that Jeff is from Dallas. We had just an incredible visit throughout the game. Ends up. His son was friends with the, one of the shortstops on the Diamondbacks. We talked baseball. We talked life. He wanted to hear all about Pam. He was fascinated by our story. And he said, you know, he says, I want to be sure and exchange contact information. I said, well, I do that a lot with people, but, and I'd love to do it with you. I said, you seem like a terrific guy. He says, yeah. He says, I could always use a friend. I said, well, well me too. I said, but of course, you're in Dallas. We'll probably never see each other again, but this has really been a lot of fun. He goes, no, no, no. He says, I promise you, we're going to stay in touch. So we exchanged contact information. He ended up having to leave the game before it was over because the reason he was here, he told me, was he's in commercial real estate, and he was here for a client's birthday party who rents a big show home, and they have a big party there. They bring in their friends from Southern California. They don't even live here either, but they have their party here. And Jeff had flown in to be part of the party and the big celebration. So he had to leave early because he was gonna head out there. Well, lo and behold, about an hour after the game, I get a text from Jeff saying, hey, I was talking with my friends, we'd love for you to come to the party. And I'm thinking, nah, I, no, we, we just met at the ball game. We spent a couple of hours together and now you're inviting me to a birthday party? They then put together a video, sent it to me in a text with several of the people at the house going, please, Jack, come to the party. We heard great things about you. Jeff says you're great. Please come to the party. So I said, oh, what the heck? I got nothing going on on a Saturday night. Go home, be by myself. So I went out. It was a pretty good little drive out to this house, but oh my goodness, what a house. It was a show home. Bottom line, I got there. What a great decision. They treated me like I had been their friend for years. Everybody introduces themselves to me. We shared a meal. We even shared a prayer together. We, we, we had a great time visiting. I didn't feel like a third wheel. And while I was there too, I met a woman who had lost her husband when she was only in her early 40s. He was only in his early 40s. And she was left to raise her kids by herself. And then about 20 years later, she met somebody else and he was there at the party with her and they were married now. And so we had a really good visit as well. But everyone there was just so incredibly nice. And I tell you this because just imagine if I had just said, oh, just forget it. I'll just keep the three tickets. I'll go in, I'll sit by myself, woe is me, have my pity party. But no, I didn't. In the end, I ended up making a great connection. I ended up meeting a whole bunch of other people. And they all, and I'm not going to say they won't be in touch. They all said they're going to stay in touch. And if I'm over in Los Angeles to please look them up, they want to visit with me. And I think I'll probably get the invitation next year to the birthday party. And as for my new friend, Jeff, I expect we'll probably stay in touch as well. So once again, friends, the advice is, as hard as it is being alone, as hard as it is being lonely, you just got to still put yourself out there. And it seems like oftentimes 
It's the kindness of strangers that comes through for me. I was thinking about it the other day. You know, I've talked a lot about when I visit churches and go to church. Lots of times nobody ever speaks to me. That's just the way the culture is sometimes. Now, I'll speak to people and then that's about as far as it goes. But it seems like when I'm just out there in society, I have these amazing encounters with perfect strangers telling me that, yeah, there is still hope out there for all of us. There are people that want to be engaged and want to be involved and want to build community. Mind you, this little community that I was part of for that Saturday night birthday party may not come together again for another year, but for me, it was one of my better Saturdays that I've had in the over three years since Pam went to heaven. I didn't say it was the best Saturday because, you know, I've had some good Saturdays with my kids and different people, but this one was just really special in how it came about. So you got to stay attuned to those little things that happen sometimes. And I don't think they're accidents. I like to sometimes call them God moments. God had prepared me all the way up until that time standing out in front of the stadium through the 22 people it ended up. I ended up asking almost 22 different acquaintances to go with me to that game and everybody turned me down. And then when I go to the stadium, two different couples turn me down and then there's Jeff, my new friend, Jeff. That's about it, friends. Hopefully I've helped you to get, I know this was a long one, a two-parter podcast YouTube video, but didn't it have a great ending? Like every story we hope would have a wonderful, wonderful ending. Well, we'll sign off for now. Keep subscribing, keep watching, and as we always say, make it a great day. Better yet, a better tomorrow. Bye now, everyone.